Good, important, sometimes tasty, but to what extent is the system we have now sustainable? Well, right now I would argue we have an unsustainable food system, and it's unsustainable in three primary ways. One is financial, two is environmental, and three is a social public health, and I'll explain that a little bit. It's financially unsustainable because farmers in Canada, and most farmers really in, in, in the developing world, can't make a living. So most people don't know this, but net farm income across Canada last year was almost negative $20,000. And the only way farmers are able to survive on the land is um, they tend to get off-farm jobs to subsidize their habit. And um, so we can see that play itself out in other ways. We only have in Ontario 7,000 farmers under the age of 35. And I think young people aren't going into farming because they don't see a financially viable future for themselves. So that's a problem we have to fix. Right. And that leads to some environmental sustainable issues as well. So when you're under that kind of pressure, farmers are re the market signals that farmers are under is, is they have to maximize production, they have to maximize yields, and they have to do that at all cost in order to survive. And so farmers increasingly have put marginal lands into production. They've used more and more chemicals to try to increase right. production. And that's all to try to survive financially. And because, and, and there, a lot of that pressure is because we have one of the cheapest food systems anywhere in the world. Uh, most Canadians, on average, spend about 9% of their after-tax income on food. In the 1960s, we spent about 17%. And to put that into comparison with other countries, in the U.S., it's about 10%. In most European countries, it's around between 15 and 20%, depending on the country. And in the, the developing world, it's oftentimes over 50%. Right. So that cheap food system actually hasn't made us healthier, is what's unbelievable about it. Is so we have an increasing obesity problem among young people in our society. Uh, type 2 diabetes is a growing problem. If you look at most health issues, they're lifestyle issues, and those lifestyle issues tend to be related to diet and exercise. So I would argue we have an unsustainable food system, and we need to move in a new direction. Can we grow the food we need to survive? And in particular, can we grow that food in a post-carbon, post-peak oil world? And I'll give you an example of that. So after the SARS crisis, the city of Toronto did a study. What would happen if our border shut down due to a terrorist act or another health crisis or whatever? What would happen? We have three days worth of food available in any major metropolitan area in Ontario. So there's increasing concerns about food security. If we only have 7,000 farmers, I repeat that, 7,000 farmers under the age of 35 in Ontario, the question is who's going to grow our food in the future, especially who's going to grow our food in the future when uh, the price of fuels becomes to the point where it becomes cost prohibitive to do a lot of international shipping of food. So that's a critically important issue. Related to that is urban sprawl. So if farming is not viable, for most farmers, particularly in urban fringe areas, is it's more financially viable for them to grow houses than to grow food. Right. Half of Canada's prime one farmland is located in southern Ontario, half of for the entire country. Most of that land is under threat to development. So as, as we continue to lose farmland, that's farmland we're going to lose for years and years and years because when you put a housing development on the land, you strip all the topsoil off. So there's increasing concerns around that. Uh, and so, and so, you know, the issue is, is will we be able to feed ourselves in the future if we can't produce our own food? Right. Talk to me a bit about Local Food Plus, which is something you're closely mm -hmm. involved in. Yeah, so I'm the Vice President and Director of uh, Market Development for Local Food Plus. And we're an organization that's mission is to build local sustainable food systems that are financially, socially, and environmentally sustainable for all stakeholders. And it's primarily an organization that's designed to start getting the incentives right in agriculture. We want to create market-based incentives for Ontario farmers to grow food using sustainable production practices. And um, in our definition of what a sustainable food system is, is one is it's financially viable for all stakeholders. So the primary producers, distributors, grocers, you know, et cetera, et cetera, everyone through the value chain. Two, that it's environmentally sustainable. So we want to create incentives to reward farmers for using good sustainable practices. It's socially responsible. So it treats people, animals, and communities well. And um, finally, it's primarily local. Right. Uh, most people don't realize this, but the food system as a whole globally contributes to about 30% of greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. 
About half of that is due to transportation. So the average meal that comes to your plate or most Canadians' plates travels anywhere between two and 4,000 kilometers with all the associated greenhouse gas emissions around that. So it has to be primarily local and regional in scope. Right. Well, how do you get people to care, I guess, is, is uh, mm -hmm. and not just the farmers, obviously they have an interest in it. How do you get the average consumer to right. care about something like this? You know, the public is way ahead of the policymakers and in some respects way ahead of the business people. So we've had some really good market research done by groups like Ipsos Reed and Inveronics that have done Canadian-wide uh, research as well as research in Ontario. And about 79% of Ontarians prefer to buy local food. 91%, and when I talk to retailers and restaurants and farmers, I use this number a lot, 91% of Ontarians would buy more local food if it was more readily available to them. Uh, slightly more than half of Ontarians seek out and buy local food at least once a week, and slightly more than half check to see where their food comes from. So the public is caring about this, and if you dig into the research, it's interesting. There's about four main reasons that they care about it. And the number one reason is they actually want to support local farmers. So there is this strong connection between the consumer wanting to connect to the farmer. They want to know who grew their food, how they grew it, where it came from. They want to know their stories. They want to get to know these people. The second reason is, is they want to support the local economy. And it's interesting because when economists do research around multiplier effects, we've learned that buying local food actually is one of the strongest multiplier effects in the economy. So when you buy food locally from a local farmer, that farmer buys inputs from the local farm supply store, the local farm supply store owner you know, goes to the barber shop right, to get right. his hair cut, et cetera, et cetera. So people see a strong connection to supporting the local economy. The third reason is people want fresh, healthy food. And that's probably been one of the most significant consumer trends in food over the last decade is the redefinition of quality. Increasing more and more people are buying food less because of price. Historically, right. price has been the primary determinant. More and more people now are buying food based on quality attributes. And if you dig into the demographics, that's being driven by the baby boom generation. And right. that generation, as you know, has driven most consumer trends in our society. <laughs> for and better or worse. For better or worse, yeah. and they're driving this one as well. And then the final issue is climate change. People are really starting to make a so a close association around food and climate change and if you think about it there's a lot of things we think about what are we going to do about climate change and you think well how can I as an individual you know shut down a coal-fired generating plant or right. you know I've got to commute to work how do I give up my car or whatever but one thing we can all do that's relatively easy is buy local food and serve that for dinner tonight. I guess the question becomes how there's obviously a commitment and it's understandable but how strong is that commitment and I guess what I'm wondering is in the context of an economic crisis does that commitment to buying organic, buying local, uh, kind of you know, be sacrificed on the altar of trying to make ends meet? Uh, to a certain extent, people are going to be more price conscious, no question about it. But let's look at this. Loblaws, Sobeys, Metro, all the major retailers now are implementing local food programs. Mm -hmm. So they're starting to realize what the public's doing. A number of public institutions, um, LFP works with institutions such as the University of Toronto, work with private schools, the town of Markham, the city of Toronto just passed a local food policy. Uh, restaurants, like the hottest trend in restaurant right now is, is local food and actually naming and identifying the farmers on restaurant menus. And we even have, it's not just high-end restaurants, we're seeing it in sort of family-style restaurants, uh, even some small uh, restaurant chains like Il Fernello, for instance. Uh, moving in this direction, and they're moving in this direction because that's where the consumer is pulling them. I think, I think politicians are starting to catch up a little bit. They're starting to realize that food is an issue that connects with urban and rural people, which is a fantastic thing because you know in politics we're increasingly seeing divides between urban and rural. And uh, so, so the politicians are starting to catch up, and my recommendation to the politicians is, is there's sort of five areas around public policy that they can support movement in this direction.